Steve Israel was a healthy man in his early 40s when one day he noticed symptoms that made him think he had the flu. Then he started having trouble breathing and went to an urgent care clinic. He was then sent to the local hospital in Temecula. As things got worse, he was medevac to the UC San Diego Medical Center. He says just before that, his wife got some troubling advice at Temecula Valley Hospital. The medical folks there told my wife, make sure that you say goodbye before he gets on the helicopter. So the way she interpreted that was, we don't know if he's going to be alive when you get down to San Diego and when the helicopter gets there. Israel had gotten sepsis. He says his lungs soon collapsed and his kidneys and gallbladder also failed. The thing that saved his life at UCSD was a machine that oxygenates the blood when your lungs no longer work. One man who played a crucial part in Steve's story was Gabriel Wardy. He was the ER doctor who ordered the helicopter flight to UCSD, where Wardy is now director of the school's hospital sepsis program. He says with sepsis, speed of diagnosis is a matter of life or death. Because the earlier that we catch sepsis and the earlier that we start some of the life-saving therapies, the better that people do. And so right now, we're really what we try to do, and particularly in our emergency department, is to catch them as quickly as we can. And that way, we're able to start the therapies like IV antibiotics, give patients some fluids uh, to really kind of prevent that worsening infection. Put simply, sepsis is an infection and a physical response to it that gets out of control. It is often bacterial, but it can be viral or caused by a fungus. Wardy says every year in the U.S., 1.7 million people get it and 270,000 die from it. The groups of people most at risk are infants, the elderly, and people with weak immune systems. At UCSD, Wardy and his colleagues have created an artificial intelligence system in use at UCSD emergency departments to spot people at high risk of sepsis. As soon as someone checks into our triage system, our machine learning model starts to ingest data from them. What does that mean? It means their vital signs, their comorbidities, the medications that they take at home, and it starts to generate a risk score. If the risk score is high enough, the system sends out an alert to the emergency room staff. UCSD deep learning researcher Aaron Bucina was on the team that created the AI model. If a patient walks into the emergency department, there's about a 5% occurrence rate of sepsis in the ED. If you get one of these alerts, your risk is 10 to 20 times higher. But even if you identify a patient who's likely to get sepsis, you still can't be sure what's causing it and what the best treatment would be. And that's where another new diagnostic tool comes in. It melts DNA to figure out if the sepsis pathogen is bacterial, viral, or fungal. This microscope in a lab at UCSD is what is used to melt DNA. A sample is taken from a person. It's placed in this device and heat is applied to it. Stephanie Fraley is a bioengineer, also at UCSD, who has created a new technology she calls MeltRead. She says when a DNA sample melts, its twisty double helix actually unravels. The amount of heat that requires and the way the DNA unravels identifies the pathogen that caused the infection. We get a signature from that. We call it a melt signature. And so we're able to match melting signatures from a sample to melting signatures that we've seen before. She says using melt read instead of waiting for a blood culture saves a lot of time, taking hours, not days. Again, with sepsis, time is of the essence. Fraley still awaits FDA approval to use her technology in a clinic. For all the research and the efforts to diagnose sepsis, Steve Israel still has no idea how he got it seven years ago or what kind of infection caused it. Nothing about his age or medical history made him a likely candidate. When he reflects on his experience, he thinks of the good fortune he had having a medical team that knew about sepsis and took his condition seriously, like the physician's assistant at urgent care who called for an ambulance to send him to the hospital. That person could have sent me home and said, here's some medication, here's a breathing treatment, go back home and if you don't feel better, I think if that would happen, I probably would have died in my living room at home a couple hours later. But now he's a sepsis survivor living in Temecula with his wife and three kids. Thomas Fudge, KPBS News.